On this edition of Veterans Health Watch, we'll focus on mental health issues, including treatment and symptoms for depression and anxiety disorders. We'll also talk with a veteran about his road to recovery from substance abuse. Welcome to Veterans Health Watch, a program sponsored by the VA Maryland Healthcare System that provides the latest health and benefits information for Maryland's veterans, their family members, and the local community. I'm your co-host, Kenya Griffin, and I'm glad to be joined by my guest co-host, Michael Rubin. Michael, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Kenya. It is great to be back. Today's show is going to be very important to our viewing audience because we'll focus on mental health issues that plague so many people in today's fast-paced society, as well as learn about some of the programs offered by the VA Maryland Healthcare System for its veterans. Well, Michael, the VA is dedicated to providing access to mental health services for veterans, both current and future veterans, to help make sure they maintain a healthy lifestyle. And joining us today to discuss the services available to veterans is the director of the Mental Health Clinical Center, Dr. Marsden McGuire. Dr. McGuire, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Kenya, and thank you, Michael, for inviting me. It's truly a pleasure and an honor. Well, Dr. McGuire, we want to get started discussing, of course, uh, maybe a definition for mental health, because I know there's a stigma usually attached to mental health, and it kind of prevents some people from even seeking services. So if you could explain mental health, the, the condition or some of the disorders that would help us a little bit. Well, that's a, a really big and important question, Kenya. Mental health, I think, is best described as an overall state of uh, emotional, physical uh, health that, that also involves um, behaving in an appropriate manner. And what I mean by that is that at all stages of our lives, from the time we're children, then becoming adults, and then in our older lives, we really have to um, mature and develop. And it's hard to do that when you're not feeling emotionally well, when you're not feeling physically well, and when your behavior is not appropriate to your, your role in society. So um, that's, I think, the best way to describe it. It's an overall uh, sense of well-being and being on uh, a road to uh, progression. Great. So how would a person know if they were starting to have a mental health problem? Well, I think there are several ways, Michael. One is when you feel you're off track, and that might mean that you're having emotional symptoms that uh, are getting in the way of your feeling of making progress uh, down the road that you want to be going in or developing. Uh, it might mean that you're having some physical uh, symptoms or issues that are related to your emotional state. Uh, so people can feel you know, very tired all the time while feeling depressed, as an example of that. And the physical and the mental really go together. Uh, and I did mention behavior before, and uh, none of us likes to think too much about behavior because we're behaving all the time and it seems we can't do much about it. But if we're you know, off the, um, if we're outside the normal range, if we're doing things we haven't done before and we we don't know why or other people are saying, gee, you never used to do that. Uh, and that goes along with feeling poorly, either emotionally or physically. All of those things might point to some kind of problem going on. Does the VA Maryland healthcare system provide specialized services for veterans who have more serious mental illnesses? Uh, definitely. They provide a whole range of mental health services. And you mentioned uh, uh, serious mental illness. That, that really speaks to some of the um, uh, more debilitating conditions that can really get in the way of people progressing or developing. Uh, you may have heard of schizophrenia or bipolar illness, sometimes called manic depression, uh, or just plain major depression. Uh, there's also post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, all of these things can occur either individually or in combination 
to really throw people off track. And the VA does have services for all of these conditions based on the specific diagnosis or combination of diagnoses, the severity of the symptoms involved, and then the personality of the, the veteran themselves, what they are uh, able to do at this point in their life. So how would a veteran go about seeking acquiring health care within the system? Great question, Michael. One thing the veteran can do is make sure they're enrolled for VA services to begin with. Uh, it's not very well known that most veterans actually don't receive their health care through the VA, but here's a terrific opportunity to change that. If somebody is having what they think is a mental health uh, uh, issue or problem, they should go to the nearest VA or call on the phone to understand how to be enrolled. Once they're enrolled, they will be assigned a primary care provider who can then be the source of information about mental health. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, that primary provider can actually do basic mental health services, but will also be able to refer somebody who needs more comprehensive services. Okay. Dr. McGuire, for those veterans who are enrolled in the system, and maybe they live either a great distance away from a VA medical facility or they're homebound, how does the VA reach out to those veterans for mental health services? It's a great question. The VA has not always been able to serve those populations well, but has really made uh, great efforts in the past few years to ensure that the maximum number of veterans get served wherever they are and whatever their condition. So we now have tele-mental health capabilities, which means that somebody here in Baltimore can, by a video connection, uh, interview in, in real time somebody at one of our clinics on, for instance, the Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. And so the veteran doesn't have to come to Baltimore, they just have to get to, say, Cambridge, where the receiving video equipment is located and a, a full mental health interview and set of recommendations can come out of that. You also mentioned about homebound veterans. Now, by definition, they would not even be able to get to the clinic because they're homebound. We have a program that's called MICM for short. It's Mental Health Intensive Case Management Services, where we have teams of several disciplines that go out together to a veteran's home if they qualify for the program to provide services on site. And to clarify, I know the VA Maryland Healthcare System has several sites throughout the state in Cambridge, as you mentioned, in Baltimore City and Baltimore County. So a veteran can go to one of those outpatient clinics and receive care from maybe an outpatient clinic that's a little further away from them. That's correct. We have two facilities on the Eastern Shore. Cambridge is one and Pocomoke is the other. Great. Dr. McGuire, I realize the VA offers treatment in various settings, whether it's inpatient, outpatient. Can you describe in a little more detail some of those settings? Right. We, there's a term called continuum of care, which means pro providing services in a range from what's needed for people with the most severe conditions mm -hmm. or symptoms to those who don't need as intensive a level of care. So starting with the most severe, we have inpatient facilities for those who have life-threatening conditions. And uh, that can be any diagnosis. The, the real issue is keeping people safe. And we have those in, in Baltimore and up at Perry Point. Then we have outpatient services, which come in two different varieties. One is sort of your standard uh, weekly type of visit, and the other would be a more intensive, possibly even daily visits. And those could be individual or group therapy sessions. Then we have more specialized services, such as residential programs, where people do live for anywhere from 30 to 90 days with other uh, veterans with similar issues. And most of those programs are based up at Perry Point. Finally, we have specialized outpatient services, such as our uh, recovery center and what we call our PRRC. And don't worry about the initials. What it does is it provides a recovery-based model of care on a daily basis for veterans who would benefit from that. Well, Dr. McGuire, you've given us some great information. We have to take a short break, but could you tell us how a veteran could get in touch with you or, or mental health services through the VA? 
Right. Uh, One-stop shopping is always best whenever you're looking for information. And I believe there's a number that's going to be put up on the screen that will help uh, any veteran who has any question whatsoever about mental health uh, to be able to call and uh, either uh, have a conversation right at the time or be able to leave a message and expect a call back in during the same business day to answer those questions. Now for veterans with emergencies that would not be the right number to call and there are other numbers available for that such as 911 in a true medical or mental health emergency. And I should also mention that there is a Veterans Crisis Hotline, which is a national number, and we can put that up on the screen as well. well thank you. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be rejoined by Dr. McGuire to focus more on anxiety and depression. So please stay tuned. If a veteran is experiencing any type of mental health problems, they should realize that they're not alone. One of the things that we can really help with is kind of giving them the education to help them face the issues. Hiding and keeping secrets was the very thing that was keeping me sicker. Trust me, you're not by yourself. If no more than to know that I'm in that same category. Saved my marriage, made me feel like a person again. I couldn't have gotten this far without the VA. Have you ever wondered how you could support the needs of our nation's veterans? The VA Maryland Healthcare System has a number of opportunities for community members and local businesses to support the needs of hospitalized veterans throughout the state. Through your tax-deductible donation, you can help to enhance the care and service provided to Maryland's veterans. For more information, contact us at 1-800-949-1003, extension 5409. You too can show our nation's veterans that they have not been forgotten. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Rejoining us is Dr. Marsden McGuire, the director of the Mental Health Clinical Center for the VA Maryland Healthcare System. In our earlier segment, we discussed mental health services available for veterans, but now we want to turn our focus to anxiety and depression. Dr. McGuire, I learned that someone with anxiety disorder could also suffer with depression and vice versa. So could you explain or define anxiety and depression and tell us how they relate to each other? I'd be happy to, Kenya. I think we all know what anxiety and depression mean from our own personal experiences. It's rare to find anybody who has not, at some point in their life, even recently, experienced a little bit of one or the other or both. But when we talk about it in terms of mental health, uh, we're usually talking about depression or anxiety symptoms that are more severe or are interfering with our daily function. And so you just think of the symptoms that normally go with depression, let's say feeling uh, down on yourself, uh, guilty, maybe not very worthwhile or nothing to look forward to or not caring, um, sometimes even physical symptoms like fatigue and so on. But then you magnify those into a, you know, a much greater level than normal. That's the kind of depression that a person with a mental health problem experiences. Similarly for anxiety, nervousness, worry, maybe being unable to fall asleep at night, those are things we all experience but when they get magnified to a certain uh, degree they really do interfere and that's what the clinical condition of anxiety is. They are related, they do overlap so that symptoms of the one uh, might be part of you know, the other condition, uh, they're not completely separate, and one can actually lead to the other in the sense that you might be experiencing anxiety um, for a couple of months and then have that change into depression, uh, either, you know, with or without the anxiety continuing, and vice versa. Dr. McGuire, I realize that depression is a basic human emotion experienced by everyone. Um, and that actually it, sometimes it can be helpful, you know, like for example, a threat or danger. But when does it become unhelpful? Well, I think it, when it interferes with function or uh, causes symptoms that um, are really uh, new and abnormal and dangerous. So for instance, people with very severe depression can experience uh, paranoid thoughts, and we call that a, a paranoid form of depression. Uh, they can experience even hallucinations, you know, voices telling them that they're not a good person. Um, that's not an experience that people usually have uh, 
when they say they're depressed. Any of those symptoms occur, uh, that's, that's truly a, a cause for concern. And Dr. McGuire, are there different types of anxiety disorder? There, there are, and it's, uh, they're a family of disorders lumped under the term anxiety, but they would include things like uh, generalized anxiety, which just means kind of free-floating throughout the day, never seems to go away. There can be more reactive forms of anxiety, so some, somebody gets anxious in a certain situation, so their phobias are a good example of that, somebody who might be afraid to get on an elevator uh, because it's, it's a confined space or afraid of heights or spiders and, and, and so on. And most of us have symptoms like that from time to time. Uh, there is also a panic disorder, which is a, uh, a sudden sense of overwhelming uh, anxiety which can stop people in their tracks. And that may not occur in a certain situation. It can occur out of the blue. And finally, uh, post-traumatic stress dis disorder has some anxiety components to it as well. What are some of the, the depressive disorders? Depressive disorders, uh, the most severe kind is uh, what's called bipolar or manic depressive illness. And that's where you have not only depression along the lines of what I mentioned before, perhaps even with paranoid ideas and hallucinations, but also the opposite of depression or euphoria where you become so um, happy, and this sounds like a good thing, but it's not really. It's quite dangerous that you you forget about your normal relationships with people. You might drive a car through a toll booth without stopping. You might uh, decide to have you know five drinks instead of one drink, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's the most severe kind. Then you can just have regular. Uh, depression that comes and goes, or you can have constant depression, sort of like the anxiety disorder I mentioned, where it's pretty much there all the time, but at a low-grade level. And sometimes people just learn to adapt to that, but it can be treated. I would assume that there are certain risk factors that would make someone more prone to experiencing anxiety disorder or depression, are there risk factors associated with these disorders? Sure, Kenya. Um, one thing that we're getting a better handle on is th the extent to which there's a genetic basis for anxiety and depression, and those may be different for the two categories of disorders. The other thing is your, your experiences, particularly as a child, can then affect how you respond to the environment when you're older. And then to take the example of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, even when you're an adult fully formed, you can go through a traumatic experience that can then trigger depression or anxiety. Are men or women more prone to developing depression or anxiety? And are there certain points in one's life that they're more vulnerable? Great question, Michael. Uh, the, th the thing about depression and anxiety is that there's no blood test or anything else to tell us whether someone truly has it or not. It's really dependent on how they think, feel, and behave. So a large part of it is how they report themselves to be feeling. And women are more open about their feelings, I think we kind of know this, um, than men are. And as a result, they're more likely, even if the rates of depression are the same in men and women, it will appear that women report depression more frequently, and also true with anxiety. With regard to um, age, older um, uh, people, men and women alike, will report higher rates of depression. But interestingly, the most, more serious forms of depression, like with paranoia or hallucinations or even suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. that's actually less frequent older, uh, as one gets older. Well, we want to make sure our veterans know that there are treatment options available if any of this information sounded familiar to them for anxiety or depression. What sort of treatments op options are available to our veterans? There are a whole slew of them, uh, Kenya, and they range from um, therapies, which can be individual or group in orientation. Also, the various techniques of therapy require s people to be certified in order to administer them, and they're very powerful treatments, even um, as powerful as medication. And speaking of medication, there are lots of medications that uh, can treat depression. 
And so we actually have a whole range of possible treatments to administer to folks uh, in, uh, who have depression or anxiety. Well, thank you again, Dr. McGuire, for sharing so much valuable information with us. I hope that if any of this information sounds familiar to anyone, that they'll give you a call. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll have information about substance abuse disorders and how the VA Maryland health care system has helped a veteran recover from that. So please stay tuned. I was homeless with a bag of clothes two, over two years ago. We have outreach workers, uh, licensed uh, social workers that go out into the community um, and they provide um, assessment, referral, case management services to our homeless veterans. We provide almost anything that the, the veteran needs in order to try and get him back off the street and back into society. And I call my mom every day and she hears it in my voice. She says, you're alive now and you're living. These people from a nurse to the guy mopping the floors, they all have one thing in common, they save our lives. I work my incentive therapy program, working in a mayor room. I feel like I am somebody now. Um, it's hard for me to um, ask for help sometimes, taking the buses around there, and I've seen these homeless vets. And there's help, there's always help. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Joining us now to discuss substance abuse and recovery are Dr. Mark Arenas, a clinical psychologist for the VA Maryland Healthcare System, and Navy veteran Mr. Mark Lee. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Welcome. Nice to be here. Dr. Arenas, oftentimes when we hear or we talk about substance abuse, we think about misuse of prescription medication or use of illegal drugs. Is that a correct perception? Well. Partially, Kenya. Uh, I think if you're looking for a concise way to define uh, addiction or substance abuse, you'd look at a pattern. Pattern of use, uh, you'd look to increase use over time, and finally, you'd look for some negative outcome. Uh, for instance, my pattern could be I drink daily, or I could just drink on the weekends, or every couple of weeks I go on a binge. No matter what it is, it's still a pattern, but it varies from vet to vet. Uh, I'd look for an increased use. If one beer used to do it, then I'm up to three. And finally, I'd look for some kind of negative outcome. It could be my liver. It could be my hypertension. It could be my job. Maybe I got a DWI. And it finally, the, the thing that Mark and I are interested in, maybe it affected my family, my kids, my relationship with my wife. So a pattern, more use, and then some type of neg negative outcome. Dr. Arenas, I understand that you lead a program, an intensive outreach program for fathers attempting to kick their substance abuse habit that has a holistic approach mm -hmm. to fatherhood. Can you tell me more about it? Well, it's holistic. We're in the acceptance and recovery uh, program. It's an intensive outpatient program. The vets come every day during the week for three hours to four hours in the morning. and. The program really looks at the total vet, not just the substance abuse, but the different areas of the, their life that they value. So we really try to look at the total vet, not just the health part, but the other areas of uh, the vet's life that they value. So for veterans seeking assistance with substance abuse, what can they expect from the VA Maryland healthcare system as far as treatment is concerned? Well, it depends on their, their drug of choice, their state in recovery. Uh, they can access detox, detoxification programs, inpatient programs, our outpatient program. The vet who has a co-occurring uh, mental disorder, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and a substance abuse disorder, we have programs for them. Uh, our services are provided by a team of people, psychiatry, psychology, social work, addiction therapists. And so it's, it's, it's a pretty comprehensive and broad-based approach to substance abuse for the vet. Dr. Arenas, how does fatherhood aid in recovery? Well, they're really connected. Uh, recovery programs uh, typically have structure and fatherhood or parenting, you know, kids need structure. They need to know what's expected of them, what are the rules, uh, when should things happen, and the same thing applies to recovery. There are so many carryovers between the two that each time we have a group we run into those. Uh, one of the chief characteristics of our, of our therapeutic approach is one, one vet helping another in a group format. Well, in families, uh, 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 
mothers and fathers, the, you know, the people who run the show, have to work as a team too. So we have a lot of carryovers back and forth. So Mr. Lee, thank you again for joining us and sharing your story. Could you tell us how your participation in this father's group has helped with your addiction recovery? Well, one of the things that helped me with was um, restoring my relationship back with my kids. And the father's group, it was, uh, it was, it was real helpful because when I first came in, I needed some advice on really dealing with how to bond back with my kids. And, you know, I got some good advice from some of the guys and it really helped. And how did that help with your recovery process? It strengthened me, um, my inner self, you know. Um, it helped me spiritually, you know, as well as it helped me connect back with my kids. So how did you overcome the obstacles that were in your way and, um, you know, how did that make you a better father? I like to tell a lot of people that um, my spiritual aspect played a big part in it. I got actively involved in church and, you know, um, that was something that helped me stay focused, you know, so um, we need things that's, that's going to help us stay focused and being a part of the ACT program, um, it helped, uh, you know, just give us, uh, it's a lot of structure there. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of things that veterans can go to and, um, and seek help. Could you give us an example of how your relationship with your children and their mother has changed since participating in the program? It may be something you weren't able to do with them that you're able to do now. Well, um, because my, my children live in a, um, another state, um, it was hard really, you know, seeing them. So um, I spent years away from them. So after my recovery process, um, I've, I've learned how to reconnect with them. I just recently got back from South Carolina visiting my kids, so that was something important. Mr. Lee, is there anything you'd like to tell a veteran who is struggling with the same issues that you were? Um, it's important that, you know, we seek the help as a veteran. You know, um, a lot of veterans don't realize that we, we have access to um, a lot of things down at the VA, but um, we have to you know, go after what we, we served in the, in the military. And the country provides um, good access, you know, good services for us, and we have to take advantage of that. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And finally, Mark, is there anything else, or I'm sorry, Dr. Arenas, we have two Marks here. <laughs> anything else that you would like to add about the program? Yeah, and about you, it's a father's group, but we have plenty of female vets in our system, and whenever we get a mother, that wants to come into the group, we rename the group the parenting group because many of the issues overlap. Being a good father uh, has some of the same skill set as being a good mother. So I just wanted to let the female vets know that the father's group will rename itself and welcome them when they, when they want to get help too. Great. We, we want our women veterans to know that the VA is here for them as well. Thank you both so much for joining us for today's show. We really appreciate your time and for You're sharing welcome. your story. Thank you. That wraps up this edition of Veterans Health Watch. If you have questions about today's show or would like to make suggestions for future topics, please call us at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7101. Or you can find us on the web at maryland.va.gov. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who is not using the VA Maryland Healthcare System, please call us. We would love to serve you. The VA Maryland healthcare system is a great system. It's not your grandfather's VA. We are a progressive and dynamic healthcare system. And it's our mission to provide the highest quality healthcare to our veteran heroes. Great programs, great technology, great staff. And it's just touching to see how everybody just come together as one. We do what we can 
to see that they get the best service. It's a family. Nobody takes better care of you than family.